What's up, everybody? Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net, and I am here in beautiful Newburgh, New York, picking up something I totally don't need, but as a Cadillac Brome addict, I must take in all the strays, and this one is a stray. Watching too many Big Al videos on YouTube gets me to this point in life, uh, where I am here at Copart, Newburgh, not to pick up that thing, uh, but to pick up a Cadillac that I feel needed saving. Not really saving like I'm gonna do anything with it to fix it and save it, but save it in the sense that I didn't want to see it go directly to a junkyard or to get turned into scrap metal that quickly. Yeah, it's that bad. This is the stupidity I get myself into. I've bought a couple brooms that have had face plants like this, but this one's strictly a parts car, triple black, not a D elegance. It's the first time I've seen this car. It's been sitting here at the Copart yard for over a year, um, which is another thing that drives me nuts. They start charging you storage. If you buy a car on Copart, and you don't pick it up within three days, they start charging you storage. It goes $5. So this car, yeah, has been here since 9-21 of 22. That's how long this car has been here. Over a year, but I didn't pick it up within three days. So it cost me 15 extra dollars in storage. What did I buy this for? Parts, really, that's it. You know, some of the side cladding, stainless looks good on this side. Obviously, it's missing some pieces. Real shit paint job on this car. You know, the chrome is decent. Looks like we got a power antenna. Uh, factory hubcaps look pretty good. All the front end stuff is pretty jammed up. Bezel's broken. Headlight's good. Corner light, those are worth money. Junk. Bumper's junk. Grill, it's got to be junk. Um, grill surround. Surprisingly, it looks somewhat decent, but this side is busted. That's good. Bezel, broken. This guy, these are worth money, junk. But this car's not fixable. You can see where it took a pretty good smash in the front, kinked the frame rail up. Um, they say the car runs and drives. Obviously, it does or it did at some point, but things junk, 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 junk. Um, I don't remember. Oh, this car has got the uh, rare. I didn't even realize that in the vid in the uh, pictures. Uh, it's got the rare CD player option, and this is a 1990 model here. So 1990s, you can see there, only come with the CD, not a CD cassette combo like the later ones do. The CD cassette combos were 91 and 92. Oh, there's one of my quarter pieces. That's good. Um, mediocre black interior that I'll do absolutely nothing with. Um, you know, I'm gonna keep it for switch plates, these little knobs, stuff like this, trim. Uh, door panel, unfortunately, is cracked, but you know, some of this stuff is pretty beat up and worn out. Seats are torn up, but are pretty, oh no, they are pretty dry. Horn pad. Uh, surprisingly, actually, it looks like the dash pad is good. That's a nice piece. Radio, cluster. Got one of the front floor mats, the most important one. All these little chrome bits I keep. Ooh, smells like a skunk. Why does it smell like a skunk? Got those pieces. I wonder if there's a skunk living in this. I don't know how. This car obviously got hit multiple times. It looks like it's lived a pretty rough life. 
Well, there's no skunk in here, so that's good. Trunk mat, spare. Nothing exciting. Aftermarket Pioneer uh, thingamajigger there. Trunks rotted. Bumper is trash. So this car, honestly, I bought this car today. Well, I bought it a couple days ago. Picking it up today, this car will be in the junkyard by next week because I'm just going to grab some trim off. I don't keep doors. I really don't keep anything like that, especially rusty doors. Ah, oh, yeah, this thing smells like a skunk in here. It's kind of concerning. Um, probably take the amp out, test to see if the radio works. But these speaker pods are worth basically what I paid for the car. I paid $400 for this car plus fees. So add all the fees to it, it was like $700. Plus it cost me probably $150 in diesel, plus a $30 vest, plus $15 in storage. You know, seven, eight, gonna be in tolls, $1,000. But thankfully, I'll get some money back when I scrap this car. This car will probably net me back. I don't know. I should probably tie that down because that'll go sailing. This car, it's a 5.7 too. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize that. Uh, this car will probably net me back four or $500 in the scrap. So all the stuff that I get off of it really only cost me 400 bucks, which really isn't too bad. See these guys here? Those are the guys that I just helped. I'm a do-gooder type of guy and I went over there and I helped them. But the thing that really pees me off is these guys drove all the way out here, obviously unprepared, thinking that they're gonna get a deal at Copart and buy a car like the dealers do, probably used a broker or whatever. Um, and they're attaching plates off the car they're driving to the car that they're picking up. They scraped all the writing off and that's what they're doing. They're attaching regular plates. So they're gonna drive down the highway, no insurance, no registration. And uh, yeah, you're on your own at that point. That's what really kind of pisses me off, you know? Guys like me who do the right thing the right way, get their license, have proper insurance, only for guys like that to not do it the right way. Should I try to start this thing? I think I should now that I have my jump pack out. Other bonuses, it looks like this battery is from 21, so for some reason it's faded. You know what, the hood's probably been open somewhere out in this yard for the last year. Right. And off they go, not a care in the world. See you later, pal. Have a good day. Don't crash and kill anybody. All right. Well, still a good deed. So hopefully it doesn't go unknown, unnoticed. Uh, oh yeah, the dash pad. It is actually nice in this car. Let's see. Copot says it runs and dries, but that was a year ago. Obviously no gas. Oh, it runs. I think it's gonna saw something up. Wow. Of course, the radio doesn't work, so that means my amp doesn't work, which I really could use. But it's still pretty cool, one-year-only CD player. All right, I know it runs. I'm not gonna kill it. Yeah, this thing's pretty clapped out. It's got nothing good in it, really. If anybody needs anything other than those, unless you want to pay me for them. Ugh. All right. Let's batten down the hatches. I'm surprised this thing runs and not leak a bunch of fluid out. Oof, that took a smash. All right, we made it back. Papa Bear's here with tools in hand, ready to tear this son bitch apart. Uh, we didn't lose any pieces on the trip. Got a little wind burn here, which destroyed that chrome piece. Oh well. Nothing that I don't already have a million of. Wow, I didn't even notice this. Look at the door is blown out. Wow, that thing is effed up. How is that like that? It's almost a bent that out. There's no way. Like the glass is in the right spot, but the, you see that? Yeah. 
the door frame. Never came, even noticed that. The glass that. came right out of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's the frame right there. My finger's gone. All right, so we're going to pull some of this trim, all the cladding, all four hubcaps, clips, tail light, maybe this housing. Into you. Oh, yeah, never mind. Bumper's junk. This is pitted garbage. Anything in the trunk? Oh, not really. Maybe this. Doesn't have the, oh, pull down's broken too, so that's junk. Wow. This taillight's cracked, but we'll take it anyways. We'll take the clips, take the top trim, because I just used a set of that. Take, take, take. Mirrors are a little wobbly, but I can tighten those up. Take the door latches. Antenna, we'll cut a hole in the fender. Take the antenna, antenna bezel. Trim, hubcap. Basically all this stuff up here is junk, though we're gonna take these off. Take the hood emblem. Take the headlights, this. You got that? We got it. Let's get to town. All right. Just put power to it. I want to find out that the pull down actually does work. So Papa Bear knows his job now. I'm gonna yank that out. These filler panels, I've never seen. It's like, yeah, like white plastic. Very strange. How we replace our customers broken antennas yeah he doesn't care about the fender oh we just make an access panel yeah make it and then easy. we just put the panel back on after so when it breaks he can fix it himself <laughs> good All idea right. easy all right working on the inside here and i do like to take one of the things that i like to take are these little tabbed little doodads that go here but essentially these little guys they take the chrome ends off um, but the center ones, a lot of people don't know how to take those chrome ends off and they break these arms. And it's kind of a pain in the butt to get in there and like wedge your finger up under there. So this is the tool that I use to remove them. Um, you can get these, I think, at like Harbor Freight or whatever. Um, and all you basically got to do is just... Creates a little access so you can get in there a lot easier. Um, there we go. That's much better. What are you hacking on my car? No! Uh, then you can get this little tab, slide it out, and you take your arm out. And I know I've shown you before, um, this is the amp. This silver guy right in here. It's basically right in here. If you don't want to lay on your back, um, you can use this tab remover tool and essentially do the same kind of motion. And you can just kind of get yourself a little bit of an access hole going here um, to do a removal on this piece. Oh no, I'm not a hack like you are. I don't, I use actual I get my tools. parts out. Yeah, I use actual tools to correct. This is the um, tab remover tool. Okay. And then I'm using it now. It's a dual tool for the tabs. And now it's for the amp. You can see the amp in there. So I'm just getting the rest of the amp out. There we go. Total destruction. No, it's right there. I didn't damage it. Unfortunately, this header panel is... CK. So... 
probably snap it in half to try to get it to fit inside the trunk. Well, I'll take care of that. Papa Bear's gonna chudo chop. Hey, let me at it. He's gonna cut it up. Come on. What, am I get what else are you gonna do? Step on it. Deal. All right, she is stripped. As far as stuff I took, it's a very, very small pile. A couple other little bigger things, cladding and whatnot, but. Um, roof trim. I still gotta get the hub caps off. Didn't have a key, but it's getting late, so um, junkyard will be here tomorrow at some point. But I'll have time to get the caps off. Uh, header panels in the trunk. Took the mirrors. Took the door latches on the front. Is pretty pretty rare mirrors. Door panels are garbage. I have so many of these switches. This one's broken anyways. Probably take the wiper switch out, but like in my life, I've never had to replace. I think maybe a couple wiper switches, but you know, so that's, you know, there's things on this car that people would be like, oh, why don't you take that? Like these pieces stainless. Very rarely do I need to replace these. Maybe if it's got a little ding or something like this, but I have so many sets. Same with these. You know, I, and I do not sell parts on eBay or to the public. I can't deal with it because people try to nickel and dime you for parts and they want this and they want that and how much is shipping. So here's the trunk. Even after I looked at it, the hood ornament's pretty, pretty wiped out. Um, corner lights I already showed you. Junk. Cracked. Just too bad. You know, but the door panels, this one's got a poked hole in it. The other one did. The grill's broken. Obviously, it's just twisted up in there. I got like 20 of these things, and this one's not even that nice. Tail light housings are damaged. I'll probably take a few more bits off. I might take this off. Um, I have plenty of the stainless. All this I have so many of. Um, so, still plates of junk. Papa Bear. <laughs> um, few things I will take off under the hood tomorrow. Um, I'll cut this AC line. I'll probably take the pressure switch out of the back of the AC compressor. Um, you know, but other than that... She's ready to come sailing off, Dad. You think we should take it off without taking the ramps out? Yup. No. Yup. 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 No. Yup. <laughs> Sounds angry. <sighs> Very angry. Off she goes to the spirit of the sky. Screaming the whole way. Don't kill me. And there goes two junks off to a better place. There she goes. Off to greener pastures. Two less Cadillacs in the world. But don't worry. I got many, many more. I should have known from the beginning that I shouldn't have bought that black car. I ended up paying $700 for the car. 
plus going out there, plus having to buy that stupid vest, which I got now 18 of. Uh, storage, diesel fuel was 150 bucks in diesel to go out and back. I was into the car for a thousand bucks. They just gave me $475 for scrap. I got what I wanted, but there wasn't a ton of good stuff on that car. And if I showed you the car stripped, you would have been like, oh, geez, you forgot to take whatever off. I take off things that I know I need, like things that I've used before or needed. Door latches, the front door latches, super common. Power antenna, granted it needs to be rebuilt, but I can rebuild it, but it's good to have a rebuildable core. Uh, the radio amp, same thing. It was junk, but I can get it rebuilt. Uh, the cladding, unfortunately, the high dollar stuff on those cars is your front end, your corner lights, headlight bezels, front bumper, header panel, all that stuff was junk, smashed to smithereens. Same with the back. Both rear taillights were damaged, even though they were whole, the tabs are broken off. Um, rear bumper impact strip, junk, missing. The side moldings, I had, you know, an incomplete set. Uh, that stuff I take off and I keep. I'll show you the small pile of stuff I actually took off that car. This here is a small pile of things I took. Both door mirrors, these are the front door latches. I take those because it's very common for one of the tabs to break off. Some of the stainless, a few of the rocker panel pieces that were there, antenna, map lights, rear third brake light, um, the tail lights, you can see here, tabs broken off. I have it screwed on that side so I won't lose it. Might try to epoxy it. Cluster, even though it reads 130,000 miles. These door speaker pods, those are probably worth, surprisingly, 500 bucks. Uh, headlights, radio. Um, I got the dash pad and stuff like that too. Some other bigger things. But anyways, so I ended up, it cost me like $500 in a day of my time for that amount of parts. It wasn't worth it. That's the problem with Copart is... The car that cost me $400, the fees alone on top of that and the aggravation and the storage and the title mailing fee or title pickup fee, 20 bucks, bullshit. Um, that's where they got you. They nickel and dime you. Even on a night, like a, a regular car, like if you bought like a $5,000 car, their fees at their, the auction is probably another $1,000 on top of that. And you're buying it sight unseen. I can buy a car from like Mannheim or Odessa and the fee's like 350 bucks for that, you know, say $7,500 car. Um, I don't know. Anyways, that's my rant. That was my parts car. It's gone to Cadillac heaven along with the DeVille. The DeVille I actually bought, another sad story and a total waste of money. I bought that DeVille strictly to use the interior for my... Burnt Coach Builders Convertible that I got down in Florida. The day after I bought that on Copart for the same seven eight hundred dollars, uh, thankfully I bought that locally. Um, my buddy George from Elite Motor Cars, uh, he had a two thousand four Deville with forty thousand miles, same interior color that I needed, got totaled the day after. So I ended up getting that car from him. So really, I didn't even take the interior out of that car. I took the headlights and chrome center caps and random little BS trinkets. Sent that thing on its way. I lost money on that too because I only got 475 bucks for that one. But hey, it is what it is. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. We're going to start working on that coach convertible now that I got George's car uh, here at the shop. Uh, it's right outside. 40,000 mile interior to go into that convertible that had like 40,000 miles. So it's going to work out quite well. Uh, I'm excited to get that car put back together. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because the next uh, parts car-ish thing video is going to be putting that convertible together. So thanks for watching.